AI image creation is no longer just a gimmick where you can make cool pictures like this one. It is now a new and incredibly useful tool for your design process. We all have books just like I do back here of, of all of our favorite architects and all of our inspiration and materials boards and mood boards and all kinds of stuff that we pull together when we're designing a project. But now imagine being able to iterate through your inspiration and ideas directly within your Revit model. And that's what AI can do for us now. Whenever it comes to some sort of new technology, whether it's AR, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, you name it, I'm always looking for the most practical uses beyond the sort of gimmick that always seems to come up uh, when these tools first arrive. And so when I first found out about Project Veris, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I'd played around with tools like Dolly and I was able to upload photos and put in some cool artistic prompts and got these really cool examples, but it was never really connected to my actual designs. So when I first saw Project Veris and the idea that you can bake this, this concept of AI directly inside of Revit and use it as a tool alongside um, I was super excited and I wanted to dig in right away. If you're sitting there wondering what the heck is this Project Veris thing, uh, well, I'm going to show you in a second. But before I jump into showing you exactly how it works within the Revit environment, I figured I would let the creators of Project Veris sort of tell you about what they say Project Veris is. Essentially an ideation tool that is kind of getting built up to be a visualization tool. And it's not just purely a visualization, but you could think of it as a lot more than that. Like right now it does that pretty well, but essentially with Veras, we could just get the 3D geometry and then via prompt, you could augment and explore different design iterations. And it does a pretty good job at doing that. Beyond that though, is our kind of effort to get it closer to just kind of render exactly what you see in Revit, but just using, you know, machine learning data to compose lighting and materiality and things like that. So that was Ben's take on what Project Veras is, which he created it. So. I'll let him have his take. My take on what it is, is exactly what I said in the beginning. It's a tool in which you can iterate through design options and use alongside your design process. The coolest part about it is it's built on top of Revit. So it's utilizing your existing geometry and your metadata within your project to develop these images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and just show you the tool and how it works. And then we're going to go through three tips on how you can get the most out of using Veris within the Revit environment as a tool for your design process. So let's jump into uh, an example project and I'll show you what this various thing is all about. So first, here's a Revit project. This is a project I'm working on. It's a, a modern bar and design. Um, and the couple things that you'll notice right away, which we'll talk about uh, a little later, is I'm in a realistic view. I have hidden lines off and I do have some materials applied as well as some RPC trees. I'll talk about that in a, in a second on how important those are. But basically, here's my Revit model, right? If I if I jump out and I zoom in, you know, here it is. It's a Revit model. It's got some materiality. It's got a site. Uh, it's got some topography and so on and so forth. So if I jump to this view and I go to e Evolve Lab, the creators of Veris, and I launch Veris, what you're going to see is it automatically pulled in my my Revit view that I was on. Okay, uh, and what I can do here is I can actually I can actually flip between views by refreshing it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna change my width so that it generally meets the aspect ratio of my view. And you'll see it starts kind of kind of adjusting here when I get to that point. So that we're gonna we're gonna go just before it moves. I'm just gonna click render without doing anything. So if I click render, just to show you what happens here, you can see it just kind of took the materials um, and the materiality and the layout uh, as it was, and it just kind of made some assumptions of what what I was trying to do. Um, you'll notice I have creativity strength cranked all the way up, and I have style strength uh, in sort of the middle. If I was to crank those down a little bit and just click render, you'll see it's gonna start looking a little bit more like your Revit image. Um, so, you know, here we go here, I turn down style and creativity, and you can see it's just kind of a, a, a realistic view of, of your Revit image, right? Um, but now this is the really cool part. So I'm going to crank up the creativity strength to around 60 and style strength to around 40. And now I'm going to use prompts. I'm, I'm also going to turn on turbo nature, um, because that actually creates um, more vegetation in the scene, which is pretty awesome. And now prompts. Prompts is everything in AI. Okay, and we're going to talk about it in the three tips uh, coming up, um, some of the tips and tricks that you can use when prompting. But I'm just going to run through and type in a couple prompts, and uh, and you're going to see what it does to the result here. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, so modern warm cabin, dark wood vertical siding, fire pit on a wooden deck in the woods during springtime, field of wild grass in the foreground. Now I'm going to click, I'm actually going to do two renderings of this. So it does up to four right now. So it does two iterations and I'm going to click render. So now you can see here's, here's the two results I got, right? These are kind of the two, two references I got here. And so you'll notice what it's doing is it's trying to utilize the image and it's, it's generating a, a, a concept based on the prompts. So I'm going to crank up the 
style strength a little bit and I'm gonna bring the creativity strength a little bit higher and I'm just gonna render that exact same prompt. So remember the prompts, I'm gonna do 60 and 87. Um, the prompt was modern, warm cabin, dark wood, vertical siding, fire pit on a wooden deck, blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna render here. All right, so now you can see with the style strength changed, you're starting to lose a little more of the actual, the actual Revit design or the model elements, but you're starting to get more, more stylistic changes within it. Right, and so you can kind of see now I'm starting to iterate through these ideas, these concepts. Um, so then I'm also just going to show you uh, if I wanted to say instead of dark wood vertical siding, I'm going to go with horizontal core 10 steel exterior. So all I did was I changed the prompt from modern worn cabin horizontal to um, with vertical vertical wood dark wood. I went to horizontal core 10 steel exterior, and now I'm going to click render. Didn't change anything else. So there we go. You could see we got some results, some interesting results. As you can see, right, the, the program is pretty straightforward. It's a, it's a plugin that sits on top of Revit. It imports your Revit view into the program, and then it uses prompts and a couple of those sliders and information to actually generate machine learned AI generated images of your scene. So when you start playing with these prompts and understanding how they go, you can start making some really neat things like this image, or this image, or even this image of a miniature train set version of my cabin. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of interesting things you can do with it, but uh, the key is really understanding how to utilize the prompting system and also understanding what needs to and does it need to be modeled. So with that, I wanna jump right into the three tips. So tip number one is use materials and model elements to guide the AI. To try to explain to you what I mean about directing the AI, I wanted to use this little guy here, the Drawbot. This is a, a little toy my son has, and we're gonna pretend that this is AI. And so what you'll notice is that when I put this on a piece of paper and I just turn it on, this robot just goes in circles, aimlessly moving around and around and around. But when I draw, a nice dark line and I place this robot on the line and I turn him on, what does he do? Well, he follows the line exactly where I wanted him to go. This may just be a little toy robot, but just like AI, this guy's not sentient. He doesn't have feelings. He doesn't know what you want him to do. And so we need to tell him that. So as long as you keep that in mind, as you're describing your prompts, as you're setting up your models and you're using AI to generate what you want, then you're gonna get the results that you're expecting or better. Let me show you a couple of examples of what I mean to utilize model elements as well as materials to help guide the AI to what you want. So if we look back at our original example here, um, which, is, which is this view, uh, the view one of this, of this project, if I was to hide the planting in this view. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna hide my planting and I refresh this view. So refresh Revit preview. Okay, so now our image does not have planting, right? And if I was to keep the prompts exactly where they were and click render, watch what happens. I don't have as dense of a forest at all, if any forest. The background came in, but the front, it didn't know where to put even some of these, you could see there's, there's additional trees beyond just my RPC trees. If I flip between this guy and this guy, um, and it didn't know where to put them, even though my prompt clearly says in the woods during springtime. What that means is you need to have model elements that are, are directing the AI what to do. So if I was to keep all of this the same, and instead of field the wild gas, grass in the foreground, I'll put um, two children playing in a field of grass in the foreground. Okay, now I just did two children playing in the field of grass in the foreground. So now if I click render, so now what we see is that didn't happen, <laughs> right? There, there aren't two children playing in the foreground in a field of grass, right? But if I go back to my Revit view and I place some people, so now if I place, uh, let's say J right here, and let's do maybe Tina right here. Okay, so now I have these two people sitting in front, right? So now if I go back to Veras, and now I have the same settings except for two children playing, blah, blah, blah. I click render and look at that, right? Now there's two children playing in the front, okay? So you need to guide the AI. You need to tell the AI what to do. It is a machine, okay? So the more you understand that, 
the better your results will be as you're prompting through this. When it comes to materials, it's very similar as well. Okay, so uh, one example that I wanna show you, which I thought was pretty good, is if you use this on a conceptual mass. So what I have here is a conceptual mass. This is just an extrusion of the Stilted Studios project, which some of you may be familiar with from a few videos from quite a while back. And you'll see it's, it's a mass. There's, there's some stairs, there's some corrugated metal, but for the most part, that's it, it's a mass. I wanted to test if, when I just have a mass like this, can I use the AI, can I use Varus to actually apply materials and even details and start seeing what my mass would look like with all of this information in it, with like almost a fully rendered project um, and iterate through different material options and so on and so forth. Um, so actually, first I'm gonna render it without prompts. So you can see without prompts, <laughs> it did some crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, but the first thing you'll notice is that these boxes, even though I clearly have a protrusion, right, this this sort of frame around the, the objects, um, it's not seeing that, right? Uh, it's obviously doing some crazy stuff with materials, but um, it also did some really neat stuff with the forest, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try, we're gonna try and get a little more of this. So, okay, so now we, we added black metal panel exterior and cabin on stilts. So I'm gonna click render. Okay, so you see it, it's starting to uh, see, you know, I said glass facing downhill, but you'll notice it's still not really registering the geometry. It's doing a really cool job with the with the background, with the, with the context, but it's still not fully registering the geometry. So I'm gonna leave this prompt exactly as it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint the faces of this mass so that these faces here, this face and this face, are, are glass, they're blue, basically. Okay, so now that they're painted blue, as you can see here, uh, I'm gonna run back into Varus. I'm going to show my Revit preview. I'm going to refresh my Revit preview. I'm just right clicking to do this. Okay, now I'm going to have the exact same prompt, black metal panel exterior, cabin on stilts, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to click render. Now, you can see I'm starting to get something that's more like my end thought, which is that this thing is glass framed around the exterior and so on and so forth. Um, so as you can see right there, that is a way that you can use materiality to help the AI understand what you're trying to do. If you just give it a square or a box and say glass and metal frame, then it doesn't know where to put the glass. It'll put glass somewhere, but you need to direct it. You need to tell it what to do. So that's tip number one is you need to direct the AI. You need to control the AI using things like model elements and materiality. The second tip is actually one that I'm gonna have Ben, the creator of Veras, tell you, which is more prompts are good. You may have thought it was kind of funny as I was type, 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 typing through all this stuff and adding all this, all this information, but what you'll see is that the more prompts you add, the more detail you add, uh, the better your results are going to be. To get better results and finesse them, I've always kind of, I've gotten that via, via prompting. So like adding more mm -hmm. prompts and describing what I'm seeing in the scene or what I would like to see in the scene, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. And then just finessing the problem, like adding more to it or removing from it. Like I added this one, but I didn't like how it turned out. So I'll remove that. Mm -hmm. And then like so a lot of times if I put like gray sky, it might make the whole picture gray and like, oh, it's affecting like a lot more. Or if there's mm -hmm. no sky, but I, I put like, like, you know, blue sky, it might kind of, because illuminate, you know, illumination has an effect on the, the right. environment. It might make things at a, at a blue hint, even though there's like no sky in the image. So those kind of things, like I might not like that effect and I might just, play with the prompting once I kind of have a more elaborate prompt. So what does that look like in practice? Well, let's jump back to our hillside cabin here and let's start from scratch and we're gonna do another big prompt here. So let's say, so old wooden exterior facade, glass facing downhill, cabin on stilts, warm interior lighting, wooden deck between building masses, rock hillside with a stream in the woods during sunset. There we go. So you can see we're starting to get something, but this is this is where um, the the combination of prompting and model slash uh, uh, materiality are going to help you drive this image. So the final tip, tip number three, I can't take credit for. I'm going to give Bill Allen, who is the CEO of Evolve Labs, credit for, and and this is the tip he told me. Something I don't think had been mentioned yet was the concept of adding the parentheses to words as well. The more you put parentheses or around specific words within your text prompt, there'll be more of a metric or a weight to those specific words right. and it'll give more influence to your rendering. But if I'm not quite getting the results I want and I'm like, well, I want more of this thing, I'll put mm. like parentheses around that and then it'll try to give more weight to that. So of course I had to try it out. So what I'm gonna do for this example is I'm actually gonna use an interior scene. This is the modern kitchen. Uh, those of you guys who have followed along the channel probably have seen this before. And we're gonna launch Evolve Lab. Now I figured this would be a cool example to show you some um, interior stuff as well. So 
Notice I'm just gonna again try and match it as best I can. I'm gonna check the box that says is interior. And now for the prompt, I'm gonna use modern kitchen, white walls, white ceiling, white concrete floor, forest outside seen through the large glass windows. Now you can see uh, it's doing something. <laughs> uh, and now if I wanna say, I wanna stress some things a little more. So I'm gonna add in parentheses, I'm gonna say green furniture. In parentheses, I'm gonna click render. Now you can see what it did is it made all the furniture green. But now let's, let's remove those parentheses. Now I'm gonna have the same prompt, except what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say dark wooden cabinets and I'll click render and there you go so now you can see it's using the green furniture but now it's stressing the dark green cabin so so there you have it the three tips you can take away from this using model elements and materials to guide the AI robot more prompts are better and using parentheses to emphasize certain prompts so take this go try out the free trial of project Verus, which you get like 30 something renderings AI is definitely going to change our industry and it's up to you and me to determine if that's for the better or for the worse.